Hello everyone, my name is George Slatkovsky and today we are looking at a new update for JS Curve Tools plugin for Maya. So the main thing in this update is support of Maya 2023. Yes, it was all tested and it works without any issues as far as I can tell. But if you encounter any bugs in Maya 2023, report in my Discord server or uh, using email or our station or whatever you want. So the main thing for this update uh, is improvement of scale factor function as well as some additional utility functions like convert curves. So the scale factor basically adjusts the scale of the card before you actually create this card. So uh, it's a hidden value. You can find it in the scale factor uh, window over here. And by default, it's one. So for example, if I create a card with a scale factor of one, you will see in this particular scene, this card is uh, looks like that. And if I change it to two, for example, and create a new card, you'll see that it will be um, twice as big. So even before you create uh, the, your card, you can actually adjust the scale so your uh, card will have a appropriate um, width and scale over here even before you actually start to change your width slider over here. So before the scale factor was only stored on a global parameter that you uh, shared with all of your scenes. For example, if you set it uh, like two over here uh, and uh, you will get the two scale factor for every scene that you use. But now it actually is stored in the global, but it also stored in the scene as well. And the scene takes priority. So for example, if you um, start your project and you set up your scale factor for, for example, something 1.5 1, 1 or 0 0.5 or something like that and click save, uh, it will of course store it as global as well, um, like before. But now it will actually imprint into uh, it into the scene. And next time you open the scene, it will look at the scene scale factor and actually adjust it, adjust it and all of your new cars will be created with this scale factor. So you don't need to remember um, uh, which scale factor you used for each scene to actually continue uh, working on that scene, right? So that's very useful. And it also stores the scale factor in each card you create. For example, if you create scale factor, uh, a card with a scale factor of 0.5, it will store um, this value inside of this card. And uh, next time you use something like uh, add cars or add tubes uh, function, it will actually read this scale factor and adjust the scale accordingly. So that's another thing. So for example, if I do something like this and actually add cards uh, with this uh, different scale factors, you'll see that it actually tries to adjust for this scale factor a little bit and actually creates a current in, in between with the uh, various scales, just like that. So sc a scale is now stored in the card as well. So this is really useful and it actually um, is a necessary step for the next function. So the next new function is conversion function. So uh, now you can actually, let's just close this. You can actually convert um, different types of cars or tubes into other different types of cars of uh, uh, cars and tubes. It's right now in beta version. So for example, I have, uh, I've created a card that is a warp card, right? And I want to change it to extrude card. I can just click convert and it will now convert it to the warp card and I can change it back and uh, without any problem just by clicking on those functions. Now you might have noticed, let me just uh, let me just do this again, you might, might have noticed a small like a jump in the orientation that it made. If I convert to extrude you'll see that yeah, it changed the orientation. So this function, is, uh, those functions are now in the uh, beta version. I will improve on them a little, little bit later uh, because they have some issues with uh, orientation when you convert them. But now you can freely convert extrude uh, uh, to warp and vice versa. So why is that useful? So let's say you started your um, project with uh, uh, like uh, extrude cards, you made templates, right? You actually created 
like template cards just like that and adjusted the uh, uvs and stuff and now you think hey i think i want other type of cards or i think i want this texture to be in a tube shape right you can just do this and it will transfer all of the attributes transfer the uvs transfer the all of the compatible attributes to a new shape and you will get a tube instead of the card and vice versa now of course if you take for example a warp card let's convert it to warp card and you will take and change some um, attribute that is only available for warp cards for example inverted twist it it doesn't you you, you don't have it on the extrude cards right you have only twist uh, if you go and convert this uh, warp card to extrude card you will of course lose this um, parameter because there is no way to convert the warp card to extrude card without any losses uh, it's a little bit easier to do from the extrude to warp but as as you saw there's uh, there, there are some orientation uh, problems that you can have so you can adjust uh, take a completed project uh, select everything and convert it to the cards uh, you want so you can of course do this but you'll need to adjust a bunch of uh, parameters before it it's actually usable so why would you want to ex uh, convert to extrude cards for example uh, because they are much much faster so if you for, uh, start to change some stuff on the warp tube over here just like that you'll see that it it has a little bit of lag but it's in general it's fine if you start to make a bunch of adjustments to a bunch of tubes it will uh, the lag will be even more but if you go and to try to do this in extrude you'll see that it is actually much much faster than the warp cards there's a little bit a little bit of a difference you you can see over here but there's really a lot of um, lag if you go and try to adjust like like 100 of those cards uh, tubes or cards uh, the warp cards and there's almost no um, visible lag when you do this with uh, extrude cards because they are much faster so another useful addition for this version is uh, always on top toggle for your layers so you can toggle it globally by um, accessing the marking menu on the curve filter over here as you can see we'll have a toggle always on top and uh, this will uh, create this mess because uh, you will see every curve uh, no matter uh, where it is but you can also do this on a per layer basis so you can just hold control and click on the layer and as you can see this will allow you to see through the mesh and uh, you will be able to see the uh, the curves so depending on the version of Maya that you are using you can have uh, different results because um, this always on top uh, parameter is only for Maya 2022 and 2023 and uh, I hope that it will uh, actually go on from uh, 2023 as well uh, on the next versions but uh, for previous versions you uh, can only use a global modifier and it will all basically use the old hotkey that you had before uh, that uh, uses the trick with ambient occlusion toggle over here uh, it will just automatically um, enable ambient occlusion and it will set all the parameters for the viewport for you so this is it for this new update uh, the conversion and uh, the new scale factor system so if you have any bugs just report them to me and uh, yeah thank you for watching see you next time